It's back to school season and health experts are alerting parents about certain viruses. This week, the CDC issued a health advisory for an increase in human parovirus cases. Joining us right now is Dr. David Demert from GW School of Medicine to explain how quickly it spreads and how to protect yourself. Dr. Demert, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. All right, so up first, can you explain to our viewers at home what parovirus is and what symptoms we should be looking out for? So parovirus B19 is actually a very common virus. Um, it's estimated that uh, once you re reach the age of 40 years, um, about 70% of the entire population would already have been infected. So it's a very common infection, especially in kids um, under the age of five, and it's spread by respiratory droplets. So just breathing out um, the virus that's in, in your lungs. So when you usually hear about this disease, you normally think about it as something being associated with, with dogs. Uh, we understand that it can be really contagious for humans as well. Can you explain the difference for us here? Yes, yeah, so normally in humans, it's a very mild infection. So the most common symptoms that you would see, especially in kids, were uh, at first a fever and then a rash. And it's a, a very typical rash. We call it a slap cheek rash where the cheeks are really red and rosy. Uh, and then it goes away, the symptoms. If adults get infected, um, they can have more serious symptoms. And usually that involves some joint pain, even joint swelling. But again, it usually goes away on its own. It's only really an issue for humans, um, uh, people who are pregnant, um, because the infection be, can be transmitted to the fetus. And then also people who have some issue with their immune system are immunocompromised, it can cause more severe disease. Similar to what sometimes happens in dogs where they get really low blood counts uh, as a result of the infection. But that doesn't happen in the vast majority of people who get this infection. All right, certainly good to know there. Uh, as you can imagine, a lot of students are going to be heading back to school within the next few weeks. Parents are trying to get their young ones ready. Uh, any advice for parents as they're trying to get their kids ready for going back to school and how to stay away from this virus? Right. So one thing to mention is that this is usually an infection of the spring and early summer and not so much in the fall. So my suspicion would be even though cases increased uh, this year in the spring, uh, it's probably not going to be the same uh, in fall when people start going or kids start going back to school. Um, but to prevent the infection, stay away from people who are sick, particularly if they have a fever or a rash. Uh, even better, kids who have that um, should stay away from school. Um, but usually once the rash develops, people are no longer infectious. So just as you would do for COVID, if so you're around someone who's sick, um, you can wear a mask, wash your hands. Those are the easiest things and most reliable things to do. We certainly learned a lot about that during the pandemic. Uh, and uh Hopefully, many of us are continuing with, with some of those practices as well. Last question for you, just how concerned should we be? Should we be overly concerned or just kind of moderate at this point? I would not be any more concerned um, right now than I was or kids were or parents were a couple of years ago. To be honest, the rate of infection went down during the pandemic most likely because of all the precautions people were taking not to get COVID. And now it's gone back up. Um, more like it used to be pre-pandemic. So I would not take any other precautions than you would normally have taken um, even before like five years ago. All right, Dr. Dimer, thank you for your time, sir. We appreciate it. You're welcome.